architecture shapes our built environment. It is more than a combination of art and design fulfilling a utilitarian purpose. It is a reflection of a society's values and aspirations. At its most powerful, architecture can be transformative, not only creating spaces that inspire, challenge and delight, but can forge a path for society at large and provide a tangible vision of what is possible. Across Australia, architects, urban planners and community leaders are using community-focused design to solve real-world problems and create more sustainable and inclusive environments. Join us as we explore how design can create vibrant and healthy local communities that foster connection and local engagement. Designed by Melbourne-based firm CHT Architects, Craftworks is far from just any multi-storey commercial development. The building we're in today, Craftworks, is a office building where we are trying to challenge the notion of the way an office building should be. CHT is a multidisciplinary practice of architects and interior designers. Predominantly the buildings we do are involved with communities, whether they be apartment buildings where there are communities living in those buildings, office buildings where people are working, or in aged care and retirement, again, where people are living. Those buildings allow us to not only design the individual user's experience, but also the experience for the entire community as well as the community beyond those buildings and how those interactions work with architecture. So Craftworks has been designed with sustainability in mind as well. Things like introducing the rooftop garden space, um, veggie plot, um, we've got a chicken run up here as well. We had a big focus on sustainable wellness for the building as a whole. So we have included a lot of communal facilities, a place, I guess, to create a real community within the building. And so we've put a lot of emphasis, again, not only in the building, but in the tendencies on communal space, on that interaction. So Design and Craftworks was really born out of a a need and a, and a want to create a workplace that was sort of future focused, so embrace uh, collaboration, not only within your own office space, but also with other tenants within the overall building. Craftworks has been a journey of around about seven years from inception to completion. And along that journey, we've really looked at the opportunity of striving for something different. We just didn't want to build another office building. We wanted to really challenge the notion of office buildings, challenge the way they're used, and really look at, at the future. I think as an architect, we have a responsibility of designing the future rather than relying on designing what's been done in the past. And we took direct inspiration for the interiors um, for craft works from the architecture. Uh, the architects uh, used, I guess, inspiration from the Bauhaus movement. So it's drawing more inspiration from the form and the functions and the geometry of angular lines and forms. So that is, I guess, quite evident and repeated through our design. Uh, our main kind of inspiration was just to really draw on that wording and inspiration of craft works as a whole. And so a lot of our material choices and selections you know, were quite textural and tactile. So you'd want to go and feel and touch the materials and I guess get that element of craftsmanship. It's a new big office building that's really designed to stitch into the local fabric. The ground floor and the podium levels really speak to the existing architecture in Abbotsford. And then the upper levels, being a much more contemporary design, contemporary workspace, speaks more to the emergent character of Abbotsford. An early suburb of Melbourne, Abbotsford quickly became a hub of industry with factories, warehouses and workers' cottages dominating the area. 
Like much of Melbourne's inner suburbs, gentrification combined with its industrial landscape has made it one of the preeminent scenes of arts and culture. But its increasing appeal as a destination to both live and work in has had consequences. What's quite interesting is that in uh, country towns there tends to be a much stronger sense of community and I think that's been lost in the urban environment. So we then took that sort of um, rural experience, everything from the farm through to the community and implemented that in this building and produced the architecture that allows it to happen. So we then have a sense of community in this building rather than a, a, a group of individuals or individual businesses. So the, the overarching design philosophy behind Craftworks um, really came about when we were looking for ways of enhancing collaboration within the workspace and it, it led us to looking at Walter Gropius's um, Bauhaus Manifesto which was really about creating a space that like-minded uh, creatives could come together um, and collaborate together to create something even better than they could do in isolation. So lots of the spaces within this building are, are sort of designed with that in mind to bring people together out of their normal workspace and bump shoulders with each other and learn from each other uh, and really enhance each other's craft. The Bauhaus movement was an influential art and design school that operated in Germany from 1919 to 1933. It sought to create a new form of art and design that would be both functional and aesthetically pleasing, emphasising simplicity, clarity and functionality. The Bauhaus principles integrate well with collaborative workspace design. As more and more companies move towards a flexible and collaborative work culture, collaborative workspaces are becoming increasingly important. In a few years' time, it's estimated that almost one third of workspaces will be collaborative. The building has been designed with energy efficiency as a, at a very high level. The air conditioning has been developed to run very efficiently and we do things like actually weigh the amount of waste that comes out of each level and then monitor that and provide feedback back to the tenants so they can look at trying to reduce that waste. Sustainable design is important to me, not only as a designer but also as an individual. I want to make sure that you know we are creating spaces that people enjoy and that sense of community is there, that you know fostering relationships the sustainability approach to wellness, I guess, has been really enhanced in our rooftop level and, and more importantly, our rooftop garden and dining space. So we have inbuilt veggie patches up there. We've got chickens, beehive as well. And you know, the cafe downstairs will be able to use these veggies and the eggs from the chickens and honey from the bees and use that in their cafe. And we can take their veggie scraps, for example, and put them back into our garden beds. The joy of growing and harvesting your own produce is no longer an after-hours luxury. As long as you don't see it as a chore, that is. Once it gets going, the garden provides healthy food and snacks for employees who can shun the traditional vending machine in favour of fresh produce, with the mental health benefits flowing back into productivity. So Craftworks is located in the heart of Abbotsford, only a stone's throw from the CBD uh, and also really close to Yarra Bend as well. So you've kind of got the best of both worlds. You've got the hustle and bustle of, of the city, yet it's easy to get in and out. As workplaces move towards sustainability, encouraging staff to use non-motorised transport options has become more important in promoting a healthy and more active community. A carefully crafted user experience begins immediately upon entry. 
So this is our foyer. This foyer will ultimately be used as a art exhibition space. The foyer itself was a quite simple design aesthetic and that was, I guess, intentional because that space is also to be used as a gallery. So we wanted that to be quite light and airy. We amplified some of the design with the texture of the tile in that space and that was to kind of draw back and connect to the wording of Craftworks to see the craftsmanship in our design. We've got custom designed uh, lighting in the lobby which changes colour at different times of the day. Um, so each time you come back in and visit the building, you're going to get a, a very different um, sort of first impression. I'll take you through to our end of trip facilities. A uh, bottle refilling station. And our bike racks. So we've got capacity for about 150 uh, bikes here. I think Craftworks, where, where, it's sort of, where it's a little bit different to some of the other office spaces out there, um, is really the level of amenity that's, that's offered here. Putting a lot of energy into the end of trip facilities was a real driving force behind um, a lot of the ground floor design. So in here we have showers, uh, areas where you can steam your clothes, uh, lockers, uh, we have a, a beauty bar, towels and all the amenities for our end of trip. Parcels are a big part of modern offices, people having their um, eBay delivered, so we now have a parcel station down here to take a bit of pressure off the people upstairs. No more post office, Ron. Now that's a bonus. Upstairs, one might feel like they're entering a sleek art gallery rather than a dreary conventional office floor. So this is a typical office fit out in the building. The use of sort of warm materials, polished concrete, bringing in earthy materials inside this space. Abundant natural light, different size rooms for different types of activities. All the furniture's been designed by our office, so we've got really beautiful pieces of furniture. Every office needs a uh, coffee machine to keep the caffeine levels up. In-house coffee machines. They may be onto something here. We have our staff lunch area, which sort of doubles as a space for uh, meetings as well as lunch. There is a range of recreational and break room spaces throughout the building. And then we've got these booths which are used for small groups, either phone calls or using them for Zoom or Teams calls. So we're on roof level now and I'll take you through. The way this building works is the roof is a communal space, so we have over here our garden beds for the communal vegetable garden. We've got the chicken coop and then uh, some spaces that can be used for casual dining, barbecue areas and just sort of sitting out and enjoying the view. That just gives you the opportunity as a different environment to work in. Incorporating elements of nature into work environments can reduce stress enhance creativity and increase productivity. As more companies learn about these benefits, the outdoors is ever finding its way into the design of modern office buildings. This is our indoor space, which is like a club lounge. Again, it's available for all the staff that work within the building and occupants of the building and it's just a really nice space to, to work in or to hire out for functions within the building with these fantastic panoramic views all the way around. It's a great function space for any of the building's occupants to enjoy even if not everyone is as lucky as him. 
So attending our communal events that we hold, it's really good to get to know other tenants and their businesses and I guess just them on a personal level as well. It's really actually also humbling seeing individuals use the spaces that you design. I guess as interior designers that's what we aspire, we want to enhance or enrich people's lives with the interiors we create. Craftworks was completed in 2022, right at the end of the most serious effects of the COVID-19 pandemic. Suffice to say, on top of the usual challenges in completing the build project, having a global pandemic does not help. But with every challenge comes opportunity to adapt and innovate. Whilst this has been a journey of seven years, we've just recently finished building and the building has just been occupied in the last couple of weeks and the, the change that it's made to our business has been incredible and the feedback that we've had from everyone else in the building has been incredible. Craftwork seeks to bring a range of creative businesses together under one roof, creating a hub where like-minded professionals can share not just communal spaces but lifestyles and ideas. So with regards to each level, uh, we've really designed um, from an architectural perspective, a floor plate that has as much flexibility around it as possible so that a tenant can come in and do a very, very different fit out as you'll see through each of the levels here. Some of the levels sort of interconnect and have all got a very different aesthetic and I think the architecture really allows for, for that future flexibility. One of the critical components when designing an office building is the fact that people are going to work in that space. So this building has an abundance of natural light, it has natural light on all four sides of the building. We're finding that productivity is increasing in this space. We've, we've spent a lot of time and effort getting the air conditioning right and to get a, a large number of fresh air changeovers per hour. And this has created an environment where you've got nice clean air. It always feels fresh in the space and that has made a big difference to the way people work in the space. The COVID-19 pandemic didn't just cause supply chain disruptions, increases in costs and labour shortages. It also meant a fundamental change in the way physical space was considered by both governments and individuals. COVID, I guess, really through a lot of spanners in the works when it came to the tenancy fit outs in the building. So having to make sure that the plans were COVID safe, and making sure meeting rooms were adequate size for the amount of people, even desk spaces. So allowing the correct space around desks and you know everyone had their 1.5 metre diameter circle. And I guess just the flow generally of, I guess the fit outs, just making sure a lot of like crossing paths kind of didn't happen. I think post-COVID or during COVID, however you want to look at it, people have become so accustomed to working from home that I think an office space really needs to offer them something different. It needs to offer them like a hub of collaboration, which I think uh, this, this building really embraces. Within the building, there are a total of eight levels for around about 100 people per level. So people can go and work outside on a rooftop garden. They can work in a communal lounge. They can work in their office. They can work in a cafe. So there's a multiple choice of spaces that they can work in, but they're, they're exciting spaces that are filled with community, that are filled with people that, are, that provide the opportunity for people to interact with each other. And it is a challenge bringing people back to the back to an office space, but this is a space with a difference that allows for different modes of operation and different modes of working spaces. Uh, I think my favourite space in the building has to be the rooftop. Like the, the views that you get from here are just absolutely spectacular. You've got nothing really of, of a high level like this between 
uh, this location in the CBD, so you get that, that full sort of city skyline. The next steps for this building are really to develop the community within the building and that's a real challenge because it's not something that people are used to doing in office buildings. Your typical office building looks to segregate people within the building, in their own spaces, in their own cubicles. This building challenges that notion and says no matter what floor you work in, there is a communal space that you can come and work in.